Coming up on the ramen. The soup for college students. Find out who might be LSU's last comic standing. If you actually read books, you'll especially enjoy the season two premiere of Literature Corner. And we got the Grammys covered from winners to lip sync performances and fashion faux pas. You're watching the most watched program on LSU's campus, The Ramen. The Soup for College Students. The Ramen, The Soup for College Students. Hosted by Ben Wallace and Caitlin Fish. Movie news with Matt McKay. Music news with Lamar Narcisse. And a cornucopia of award-winning ramen reporters. And created by entertainment extraordinaire Jordan Wall. Welcome to the ramen. The soup for college students. The most watched program on LSU's campus. And the only show to ever cure AIDS. Okay, Fish, I don't know about you, but um, yeah, I spent Valentine's Day alone. Oh, what's wrong, Ben? Are Cupid's arrows impervious to your sexual orientation? <sighs> Reminding you to keep the Christ in Christmas and the VD in Valentine's Day, here's Hannah Martin. If you are one of the millions of sad kids who tried to ignore Valentine's Day, this is what you missed. About half of all Facebook statuses mentioned V-Day. The other half cleverly acknowledged Single Awareness Day. Oh, and uh, you're still lonely. Biebs tweeted about feeling special, Google got romantic, and uh, by the way, you're still alone. Organizations tried to bribe students with crappy candy, girls showed off their cheap Valentine's presents, and you ate away your feelings of isolation. Emo chicks wrote feminist sonnets. Players kept up the game. I got like 20 Valentines today, so, and I do have self-respect. And if you forgot, you slept alone with your dog. So happy Valentine's Day, solitary student. I hope you enjoyed your single serve dinner. For Tiger Television's The Ramen, I'm Hannah Martin. <laughs> ben, are you, are you crying? I'm just so lonely. I spent Valentine's Day in a beanbag naked with my hands six feet in my pants and, and uh, a bag of Cheeto Puffs, too. Speaking of sexual references, stand-up comics use sexual references sometimes. Auditions for LSU's last comic standing were last night and continue through next week. If you're interested, here's a look at some of the stiff and throbbing competition. Bitch, if you don't quit working out, we have a beach your ass. It looks up to me like. What you looking at her for? She got watch me beat your ass. Me, me and Justin Bieber were supposed to be puberty buddies. We were supposed to hit puberty at the exact same time, but I, I just couldn't wait any longer. He, he just kept holding out. I mean, my friends think I hate pop culture, which I just, I think hate is such a strong word, you know? I mean, in this case, it's accurate, but it's just, it's so. What's the deal with time zones? Like, what if you live, like, on the edge of one? And, uh, and, and you have to like drive across the time zone to work. I was trying to talk over the idea with my best friend, and he, he told me, he's like, I mean, you're funny, but you're not really a stand-up comedian. I was like, oh, am I more of a sit-down comedian? Like, laughter's the best medicine. You know, going off of that theory, every time someone tells me that they have cancer, I just laugh in their face. What's the deal with chopsticks? They've seen the fork. They know the fork. They know the Watch the ramen, the only show to ever have cured AIDS. Okay. Whoa, those comics were extremely talented. Speaking of extremely talented folks, it's time for the most educational segment of the show, Literature Corner. With entertainment extraordinaire and literature lunatic, Jordan Walden. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? 
I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Oh, hi there, neighbor. Once again, I'm Jordan Walden, here to show you that literature can be every bit as sleazy as other entertainment mediums. Today we're discussing a few extraordinary new authors who not only was I surprised to learn that they could write books, I was also quite surprised that they could read them. Hmm. Well, let's just jump right into it, shall we? The first brilliant literary masterpiece we're discussing today is Snooky's completely fictional account of a group of Jerseyans sharing a shore house for a bodaciously titillating summer vacation appropriately entitled A Shore Thing. Also, Snooky would like to clarify that she did not use a ghostwriter in this composition. She just had someone write it for her. But I digress. This book is a great purchase for those of you who have been living under a rock for the past three years or know how to read. Moving on, Roseanne Barr is out with her third autobiographical text dubbed Roseannarchy. This 300-page rant covers topics from political commentary to feminism. And there's even a few sexually explicit chapters near the middle. And if you can make it through the aforementioned middle chapters without expelling the contents of your stomachs, this is the prose I propose. And finally, the Bieber fever lives on despite the ramen's best effort to vaccinate this dreadful disease. We beat off AIDS, but Bieber fever's a different animal. Actually, on second thought, I'm not going to talk about Bieber's book entitled First Step to Forever, Never Say Never, Step Into Forever, 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 Ever, Forever, Ever. This edition of Literature Corner has been brought to you by the Thank God Bieber Didn't Win a Grammy Award Foundation. Now a word from our sponsors. More on Little Bieber after the break. <laughs> 